Welcome to part number 10 of the Legend of Zelda Swordless Challenge. Now I know in the past few videos we've been revisiting dungeons like Dungeon 4 and 5, but in this video we're going to go to a brand new dungeon, dungeon number 7. Uh, we can access it now that we have the magic flute. The magic flute, it serves two purposes. The first is it allows you to uh, warp between all the dungeons you visited before. You just use the flute and then uh, a tornado comes and it picks you up and then it brings you to uh, one of the dungeons you visited before. Which is nice, but a secondary secret purpose of the flute is using it on this lake and if you use it on the lake uh, it will dry up and reveal dungeon number seven. I'm pretty sure they give a hint to a hint to this in one of the dungeons. I I'm almost positive on that. I think uh, one of the, the old men scattered throughout the world tells you to use the flute on the lake. At least I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% positive. But for this dungeon, they give you a nice little hint on what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to find this place. Which is nice, considering some of the other dungeons are near impossible to find. Uh, anyways, dungeon number 7 is really easy. I described this earlier, but dungeon number seven, it's full of moblins, and moblins can be taken out with a variety of weapons, uh, but before that, uh, here's our second bomb upgrade. Make sure you come into this dungeon with 100 rupees, and then you will have a whopping 16 bombs, and that is great. 16 bombs is plenty, and we're going to need every single one of them for dungeon number six. So yeah. As I was saying, the Moblins, they're a very easy foe. I mean, we saw a lot of them in dungeon number two, and dungeon number seven has a lot of them. Um, they can be taken out with a variety of weapons. You could use bombs if you wanted to, or you could use arrows. Arrows are quite effective, but the magic wand is most effective, so use that. Oh, I think you can also use the blue candle, but you can only use that once per room, so. It's not entirely uh, effective. Uh, before coming to dungeon number seven, make sure you have the meat and then give it to this guy and he will disappear and he'll let you pass. Uh, the meat is absolutely mandatory, so make sure you get it. Otherwise, you, uh, you won't be able to pass. And I'm pretty sure that's the only time you need to use the meat, so buy it once, use it there, and you'll never have to worry about it again. Um, but yeah, this dungeon's its really easy. I'm not sure why they decided to fill an entire dungeon uh, an entire dungeon with moblins, especially this late in the game. I mean, this would be okay if it was dungeon number two or three, but this is dungeon number seven. At this point, you know, I'm expecting some of the toughest enemies in the game. This dungeon should be filled with dark nuts and wizards and yeah, all, all those tough enemies, but it's not, it's filled with moblins, and moblins are really easy to kill. Uh, if you head to this secret passageway, you will find the red candle, which is an upgrade to the blue candle. Uh, basically, it's the same thing as the blue candle, except you can use it as many times as you want on the same screen. So, before we were limited to using it only once per screen, but now we can use it as many times as we want. Uh, it's not really that useful because uh, the candle weapons, they only have the same strength as a wooden sword and they're not effective against many enemies. So I don't recommend you use the candle very often. In fact, I only recommend you use it for um, uh, lighting up dark rooms because that's the only thing, uh, that's the only way to light up dark rooms. Uh, this boss returns from dungeon number five. Use the same strategy. Try to be very accurate with your bomb placement. I think if you place the bomb just right, you can defeat the boss in one bomb and then you won't even have to use the magic wand. So try to be very precise with your bomb, but if you're not, don't worry. Just use the magic wand to clean things up. Watch out for these hands right here. Uh, I hate these hands. I think I've described it before, but I absolutely hate these hands. I forgot what they're called. They're like, uh, 
uh, wall masters or something like that. But I, I absolutely hate them. I hate them. Uh, if they grab you, they will take you back to the beginning of the dungeon. And that's no good. I mean, who wants to go back to the beginning of the dungeon? That's such a pain. So try your very best not to get hit by them. Or not, or not to get grabbed by them. Because if you do, you're going to have to do a lot of backtracking and... I don't want to do that much backtracking in this game. Especially if it's not mandatory. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of bombable walls in uh, this dungeon, so just make sure you come in with uh, the full amount of bombs. Which, it shouldn't be a problem because uh, you get the bomb upgrade in this dungeon, so you should have 16 bombs, which is plenty. Especially if you know where you're going and all that stuff. Oh, the boss is very easy. Just use the magic wand, and I think three hits takes it down, so not a problem at all. Uh, take your piece of the Triforce, and in the next video, we are going to go to dungeon number eight. I'll see you then.